Okay, so today uh, we're going to be looking at hitting changes with our pentatonic scales. Um, and basically that means that uh, we're going to be shifting scales, our, you know, shifting through different pentatonic scales to help us outline different chord changes. So there are a lot of ways to think about using your pentatonic scales, and taking a quick glance at YouTube or Amazon.com uh, shows you that this topic has been talked about to death. This video and the accompanying exercises on my Patreon page uh, will basically be an introduction to uh, how to think about um, switching your pentatonic scales in a way that will help you really kind of nail the changes and really get a more melodic effect out of them. We'll be looking at the tw minor 12 bar blues um, to help us visualize all this stuff. Uh, so really we're going to be working with our um, our one chord, our four chord, and our five chord. Um, and uh, first, we're going to have to identify all of our pentatonic shapes um, in order to really see what's going on here. So, we've got form one. Form two. Form three. Form four. Form five. So let's take a look now at uh, the minor 12 bar blues format, right? Um, and so this is, we're basically dealing in its very bass form with the one chord. Uh, in this case, we're going to be doing A minor, the four chord, which is D minor, and the five chord, which is E minor, right? And putting them together, it's going to look like this. We've got four bars of A minor. bars of D minor, back to A minor, and then uh, a bar of E minor to D minor, A minor, and then the final bar, which is the turnaround, is back to E minor. And then we start over again. Now, we could spend the entire time just playing the A minor pentatonic scale. Um, that will work over every one of these chords. something a little bit more interesting if we start to adapt our chords, or I'm sorry, adapt the pentatonic scales that we're using to the chords that we're playing. That might look something like this. kind of sticking to, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, um, because what I was doing at the beginning was kind of using the form one of each one of these chords, right? When I'm over the A minor chord, when I'm playing over the A minor chord, I was using A minor form one. Suddenly we're over the D minor chord, now I have to switch to a D minor tonality, right? Um, and I, what I could do is I could, like I did, jump all the way up to D minor form one. back to A minor. And then I could go up to the E minor form one for the E minor. Back to D minor. And then finally A minor again. However, that's a whole lot of moving my hand around and trying to nail all of those um, forms like that, it really takes me out of playing melodically, you know, playing musical statements rather than just playing notes. 
Well, there's good news. Um, as you must have seen at the beginning of this video, each one of these forms, as it relates back to form 1, happens in a different location on the neck. And so do the form 1s of the different chords, right? Um, if I'm playing A minor, up in form 1, down in form 2, up in form 3, That's interesting. My first finger winds up on D in form 3 of A minor. If we go to the D chord and just change the where I'm, what I'm playing slightly into a, a D minor form 1, I don't have to move my hand at all. this tells us, um, or what we can extrapolate from this, is that each one of the locations, each one of the forms, has closely related keys uh, like this um, in the same spot. Just We have to just know which forms kind of fit together. So when we're in form 1 of A minor, in the same location we're going to have form 4 of D minor. Form five, uh, sorry, form three of E minor. In form two of A minor, we've got uh, form five of D minor. Form 4 of E minor. Form 3 of A minor pairs up with um, form 1 of D minor. And form 5 of E minor. Sorry. of A minor uh, pairs up with form 2 of D minor and form 1 of E minor. And finally form 5 of A minor up with uh, form 3 of D minor and form 2 of E minor. So what this means is that um, for each chord uh, we can stay in one location with our hands. Um, uh, you know, we really don't have to move that much to hit the changes over each chord, right? my hand just because I know uh, which forms relate to one another uh, and where they relate uh, to one another. And so finally, to string it all together, um, 
you know, we could just go up and down in the forms, right? We could just do something like... Honestly, that's, that's kind of boring, that's not very musical to me, right? Um, so how do we make the most out of, um, uh, out of these locational uh, phenomenons, right? Uh, well, it's pretty easy and pretty convenient. The notes that switch, there's only really one note that switches between each one of the forms, right? Uh, and the notes that switch tend to be the strongest uh, notes of the new chord. So when I'm going from, you know, if I'm in form three, uh, in, in A minor here, and I'm going to D minor, and I'm going to switch to form one, this note here, this E, changes to an F. E over A minor, that's in the chord, that's the fifth, right? Well, when we change it to an F over D minor, that's the third. That's like the strongest note in the chord. That and the and the C, the seventh. That's like the strongest chord that you can play. So, if you aim for that over the change, it's going to be really, really effective. trying to really like either land right on or somehow involve that changing note in my phrase and that's really just gonna bring the whole thing home and bring it all together and be like oh that's you just you just played the changes um, and that's that's really you know the simplest way to do this so as I said this stuff gets really really in-depth um, and really advanced and this is just an introductory like okay you know I've been playing for a little while I like to improvise um, but I want to make it sound a little bit more authentic. Um, and this is a very easy way to, to start doing that. Um, so check it out, check out the exercises, try and memorize where, how uh, each form links up with the other forms that they're related to, um, and, and like internalize the locational relationships, a lot of big word, I know, um, to, to, to really see how everything fits together. Uh, and then take this, you know, check out my exercises on my Patreon page, and yeah, I hope this helps. Keep exploring.